Thanks to Oded. Thanks to Oded for that talk, and we now have Mike Dodds to talk to us about concurrent separation logic and weak memory. Let me just uh, poke this. Uh, that's the, oh, there we go. Amazing. Um, so, weak memory and concurrent separation logic, two great flavors that go great together. Um, so, um, weak memory research, the first thing I want to talk about is just that on its own. Um, so, the domain here is concurrency, uh, empirical modeling of real-world systems, and the semantics of programming languages. Um, and the core idea here is that um, it's very natural to think that one thing happens after another in time, and everyone seems... Can you speak into the lecture mic? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just say that again. Uh, it's very tempting to wander around on the, on the, uh, on the stage. Um, so uh, the domain here we're thinking about is uh, concurrency, empirical modeling of real-world systems, and semantics of programming languages. And um, the thing that's the core insight here is that it's very tempting to think that everyone in a, every thread in the CPU sees the same view of events, but actually on real hardware, on real systems, that's not the case. Many different threads can see different orders of events. And the origin of this is sort of inter-processor caching, compiler optimization, and some other effects. And the result of this is some really weird behavior. And the second order effect is that lots of testing and verification tools are unsound, if you make that assumption. So here's a classic example, which I stole off the internet. Uh, we have two threads. One of them writes one. The other one writes one. To, uh, one of them writes one to variable a. One writes to one to variable b. And the result is you can get the result zero zero. This seems very surprising. Um, so if you think about it for a couple of minutes, what's going on here is that. Well, obviously, the print of A has to happen before the write of A, and the print of B has to, think to happen before the write of B. And obviously, things happen in program order, obviously. And so now we have a cycle in time, which probably is you know, a little bit counterintuitive. What's actually happening in this case is that each of the threads isn't running on a sort of single shared memory. It's running on kind of a memory that has like many caches. And these caches can store the loads that are the store, the values that are being, uh, they don't have to write to the main memory. So things don't have to propagate at the same time. And um, what's happening in weak memory research basically is that we have now have models for many architectures and languages for ARM, x86, power, many other things, which have a sort of reasonable job, do a reasonable job of accounting for these behaviors. Um, there are several different semantic styles of model with different properties, and we have testing and verification tools for small and medium-sized bits of code. But there's lots of open problems. So for example, many, there, there are many deep theory questions that are unanswered. Um, the existing models allow lots of, uh, lots of anomalies, and the hardware now allows lots of weird anomalies that we probably don't want to allow. But it's hard to kind of justify that without good theories. And it's very hard to test and verify realistic systems at scale. OK, so concurrent separation logic, another great flavor. So in this case, we're in the space of whole logic style verification of systems and verification of concurrency. Um, so many, many of you will have heard of separation logic. In that case, you have an idea of separation in your reasoning, which means that you can say that heap cell A and heap cell B are separated, and we can reason about A without touching B. In concurrent separation logic, we extend the idea to the idea of a th uh, multiple threads. And those threads have their own sort of thread local resources, and they can operate without interacting with each other. But of course, threads do have to interact. And so a lot of the action in this field has been about different modalities of interaction that keep the kind of separation properties where they're actually advantageous. So here's a good proof rule. This is the Brooks and uh, O'Hearn paper. Um, what we can see here is that on the bottom, we've got, uh, you know, at the bottom, it's a precondition in the horse style. You've got kind of P1 star P2 star PN. And we've got some threads, C1, C, C2, Cn, whatever. And at the top, you can see that P1, C1, Q1 can operate totally independently from Pn, C1, and Qn. And then we can conjoin those post conditions together. Now, this is an effect of separation. It means they're not interfering. But we want to have like infrastructure that allows them to interfere as well if they're going to interact. And there are a lot of concurrent separation logics. Many people have seen this slide before. Um, people like making up separation logics, and good for them. Um, I think I'm. I've got three or four separation logics on this slide. I'm, you know, I've apologized for those, of course. But um, if this is uh, um, those uh, like concurrent separation logic is, you know, there are a large number of concurrent separation logics because we don't know the right abstraction yet for dealing with concurrent programs, and they have different purposes. They're for different types of systems. Um, some automated reasoning works on small and medium examples, and we have like multiple foundational frameworks that operate, uh, give you kind of access to separation logic reasoning in, uh, in COC or other frameworks. So IRIS is the big one, VST, Bedrock, and CFML are other ones. 
But the open problems here are still very significant. We want to extend to more kinds of concurrent systems. We want to prove richer and more complex properties. Ver we want to verify big systems. And verification is extremely challenging in this environment because the systems are very complicated. And we want to automate our proofs. And the automation we have is very sparse. OK. Weak memory and concurrent separation logic together, well, there's kind of an obvious synergy between the two. Well, concurrency, concurrent separation logic is about reasoning about the effects of threads on memory, and weak memory is about weird properties of concurrent memory accesses. So we need to have concurrent separation logics that are aware of weak memory and that can kind of deal with them. OK, so today's papers. The first one is about um, reasoning about weak memory testing. So the concept here is, well, suppose someone gives us an execution trace. Is the trace consistent with the weak memory model? Well, this is a fundamental problem when you're wanting to find out whether or not your model is correct. And it turns out that this problem is NP-complete for several of the real memory models. These aren't artificial ones. They're just ones that are out there, including the C memory model. Even if it holds, uh, this is even holds in under really quite conservative assumptions that threads and memory locations and values are bounded. And so this means that, you know, we now know that this kind of task is just very hard for certain kinds of memory model structures, and it, it impacts how we think about, um, about testing. The second paper is about reasoning using concurrent separation logic on a weak memory system. So the ARM memory model, which is one of the more weak models, doesn't even respect inside, uh, dependencies inside threads. So we might not respect the ordering on operations inside the threads. So that means that like a lot of the way that we think about ordering is, is, correct, is, is incorrect in concurrent separation logic. So we need to have a way of, and this paper presents a way of reasoning about concurrent, uh, reasoning concurrently with, in, within the thread and outside the thread, which supports this memory model. And that means that we can su also support many higher fancy features, like higher order ghost states invariants. These are all needed for the most complex algorithms. The third paper is Trillium, which is about, um, um, it's about reasoning uh, about, uh, it's a CSL framework that supports refinement to specs in TLA+. Plus. So TLA+, plus is a well-known um, verification framework. And historically, a lot of these more complicated framework, uh, concurrent separation logics didn't support liveness. There were various technical limitations to do with the way that the concurrent separation logic is set up. So this paper shows that you can map into the TLA plus domain and then verify liveness properties, which has not previously been possible, at least not in these kind of fancy frameworks. And liveness matters a lot, but especially for distributed systems, which are becoming more important for concurrent separation logics. And then finally, we've got another paper about concurrent separation logic. In this case, it's about another reasoning idiom uh, using uh, session types. So session types are also very popular in distributed systems. Um, they also are kind of like a good combination with separation logic because separation gives you a way of reasoning about local states, and session types give you a way of reasoning about interaction. And this paper gives us a way of reasoning that uh, they're kind of get proving say, proofs of safety and deadlock freedom in CSL. And just as before, it's integrated with one of these fancy frameworks, and that means we get lots of nice reasoning principles sort of for free, and everything is integrated into COC. So I think these are going to be four really great papers, and I really encourage you to go see them. Thanks very much.